Hello everybody, so today we're going to talk about a subject that's kind of near and dear to my heart and that is how to attach rafters and trusses to a header um, in a pole barn or in, in other structures. And what, what I'm going to do is uh, climb up on a bunch of ladders and go to a bunch of different buildings and point out uh, a couple different methods. Uh, here we're starting with a truss uh, attached to a header in a pole barn and this is kind of my example of how I don't like to do it. Uh, unfortunately, this is a very typical way that trusses and rafters are attached to headers, both in pole barns and new home construction. Uh, and that is toe nailing. And if you look carefully here, you can see a nail there. There's a nail there, there's a nail down here. And then you can see nails coming through from the other side. And those were obviously shot in with a nail gun. Um, and you know whether or not there's this uh, splicing plate there, uh, those nails are just not going to do a darn thing to hold this truss down to that wall. Uh, and in the old days, people only toe nailed stuff in, and you know then you'd get a hurricane or a heavy windstorm, and roofs would come off of houses, and so that led to the development and widespread use with a lot of political lobbying of these Simpson straps or hurricane straps, uh, which do give you good uplift resistance. But, you know, because of such a poor practice of, of toenailing, uh, that's pretty much all there is that's gonna be holding up, uh, holding that truss or rafter down against uplift loads. Um, because the to toenailing to me, it's just worthless. Uh, we've known that for decades. Uh, this is kind of the solution, uh, but I still don't like to practice. So uh, I'm going to get down from this ladder, go over to another building, and show you uh, the way uh, I like to do things. Okay, so now we're in a pole barn uh, uh, lean-to that I've built, and this shows the method I like to use to attach rafters to a wall header, and that is with a nailing block. And blocking is used in all sorts of places in, in framing and carpentry. Uh, they're often, blocks are often used to attach stair stringers to a, a deck or to a second story. And the whole concept of a block is that you're putting in nails across the grain of the wood and you're taking advantage of the shear strength of nails. And framing nails have uh, lots of shear strength. I mean, uh, your your garden variety framing nail is usually good for about 150 pounds of shear. That would be pulling against the nail, like in that direction or that direction. And so in this case, you know, we want to hold this this rafter down, this whole roof down uh, against a, a wind load, an uplift load. And we've got four framing nails holding this block to the header. That's probably, you know, 500 to 600 pounds of, of resistance just in those nails. And... Uh, uh, then uh, really the limiting factor is how many nails you put in to attach the rafter to that block. But again, that's nailing across the grain. That's going to, again, exploit the shear strength of those nails. So here I've got, uh, you know, three framing nails in holding that rafter to the block. Uh, that's going to be a very strong connection. Now, in this case, the building inspector still wanted Simpson straps, mainly because they don't know any better, a lot of them. So we put those on, but... Uh, that that's Simpson strap is redundant. I mean this blocking and those nails uh, provides as much maybe more uplift resistance than you're going to get out of that Simpson strap. So this is the way I like to do it whenever possible. One of the additional benefits of blocking is that you give that rafter a lot of rigidity and prevent it from swinging sideways or folding over and that's important when you get to the next step in the construction when you're up on a roof either putting up purlins and a metal roof or throwing up your OSB uh, for an asphalt roof. When you don't use blocking and you're up there walking around and climbing around, those rafters are gonna have a tendency to wanna to rock a little bit. And if you're not careful, you can actually fold them all over and make a mess and you know ruin your work. So one of the other benefits I like about blocking is that it holds that rafter nice and straight and keeps it vertical and will prevent it against folding over. And so now I wanna walk over to another building and talk about one other uh, important thing to do 
when attaching rafters to a pole barn. Okay, here we are in uh, another one of my lean-tos. Um, and, and this one, uh, there are double 2x10 headers and 2x8 uh, rafters. And you can see I used blocking here as well. And again, the straps are there because the inspector wanted to see them. Um, whatever it takes to make them happy, I guess. But uh, this illustrates one of the important points when you're building a pole barn. You know, um, a lot of people just lay out the poles and space them, you know, some even number like, you know, eight feet or 10 feet and build from there. Uh, I work backwards. I space out my rafters generally every two feet. And the pole barns are nominally in, in this building uh, eight feet apart, um, the, the main poles. Um, but what I do is, you know, when, when I can, I will nudge one of those poles over a couple inches so that a rafter can be nailed to the side of that pole. And that's super important. Um, I mean, that's better for the rafter to attach it strongly. I mean, that gives the rafter pretty much a direct connection all the way down to the footing. And that ties the roof in to the uplift devices you may put in when you're putting your posts down in the holes and, and, uh, and you know, pouring concrete or however you want to do it. If you can tie that roof directly into the post and then the post into the footing, that's very, very strong uplift resistance. And so, you know, when you're doing a pole barn and you're laying out your poles, um, start by laying out your roof framing and then, you know, it doesn't take much movement you can you really just most times if you're doing this with two foot increments on your roof and your poles are nominally about eight feet or ten feet apart um, you're just going to need to adjust your poles the, the middle poles you know a few inches in one direction or another so that they can line up on the side of a rafter and then you're able to nail that rafter into the pole and that's just a great way to do it it gives you just so many benefits and so um, it's very important uh, if you can do that, uh, do it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to go look at is another building where toenailing was used, but in this case, uh, the toenailing was done correctly. Okay, so here's a timber frame structure I uh, built. This is my sawmill shed, and uh, and this one I did a combination of things on on one of the walls I used blocking to attach the rafters to an LVL beam. Uh, on the back wall I have rough sawn timber beams. They're uh, six inches wide. They're they're beefy as heck and if ever there's a case where toenailing works great is when you can use long nails to nail into a strong uh, timber beam. And so in this case uh, I have two nails on one side of the rafter and then on the other side there is a nail that would basically go down in the middle of those two. Those are extra long uh, 16D nails. I drive those in by hand. Uh, part of the problem with toe nailing rafters is everybody wants to use a nail gun and they end up shooting it in crooked, they end up splitting the wood on the rafter, the nail goes in at the wrong angle, it might be too shallow or too steep and it just doesn't hold. Um, but what I like to do is I actually have a little uh, template, I call it a drilling block, uh, that has a hole drilled in it that I can hold up against the rafter. Um, and that, that template lets me set the nail at the right height. It lets the nail go in the proper depth and the proper angle. Uh, and I drive these in with a hammer and then finish them with a nail punch. Um, I don't overdrive. The nail. I'm not trying to split the wood. I just want the nail to hold this rafter down. And so to me, that's the trick. First of all, have a heavy enough beam that you're nailing into that you can get a bite. Use long nails, drive the nails in by hand and use a block or a template uh, or a gauge or something to set the right angle and the right depth of the nail. And when you do, do it that way, you know, toe nailing works good. And, and like I said, uh, I've got uh, these nails going in on this side. There's a nail going in on the other side, uh, going at the opposite angle. And uh, together they kind of create like a scissor structure that will pull that rafter down and, and hold it pretty good. Now again, 
if you're toenailing, you really have to use Simpson straps in this case. They're not needed when you're doing blocking, uh, but for toenailing, you know, for sure, uh, use a Simpson strap on uh, all your rafters. Okay, and here we are in my current project. This is the timber frame carport, and I just wanted to show how I'm putting into practice, uh, you know, the other things I've talked about up to this point. So here's one of the middle rafters, and there's my block, and that's just uh, scrap two by fours. This is a great way to use up your scraps. Uh, this is nailed into that header beam with five, uh, five nails. These are nail gun nails, uh, glue coated ring shaped nails, those things are strong son of guns. They don't want to come out. They, they hold as good or better than screws, what I found. And uh, then I attached the 2x6 rafter to the side of that block with three GRK timber screws. And, uh, you know, I've calculated the sheer strength of the screws in the nail. So five nails and three screws are going to have about the same hold. And so there's no weak link here. Um, and again, we're nailing across the grain both ways so that's going to be a really strong connection to hold that rafter to that header beam uh, and and in this case i'm not going to be using the hurricane uh, straps uh it's, it's they'll be redundant here this structure uh won't be getting inspected because it's under the size limit for inspections in my county uh, so i'm not going to need to you know mickey mouse around with those straps they're just not needed here and then over here you can see there's one of the rafters that fell next to a post. I planned it that way. Um, and for those rafters, I attached those to the post with two uh, quarter inch GRK timber screws. Uh, they, they'll give me the more than enough uplift resistance um, right there. And so uh, this is really, you can see both in, in one shot of the video here, both of my preferred ways to uh, attach rafters to uh, headers and posts in a timber frame or a pole barn uh, type of structure. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out up here, you can see, uh, and we talked about this in a past video, I'm using a non-structural ridge here. And uh, one of the things that's really important to do with rafters and a non-structural ridge is to tie them together using a collar tie or a cross tie, they're sometimes called. And that's just a piece of two by four uh, that's almost always located in the upper third uh, of the height of that rafter pair. Uh, in this case, a four foot long two by four fell right about where it needed to. So it was a convenient uh, length to cut for these cross ties. Those are screwed into each rafter with uh, three GRK structural screws. And uh, their main goal, or their, their main point really, is to keep those two rafters from spreading apart when you get a heavy load pushing down. Uh, right at the very peak, you know, gravity kind of has an arch effect and it's gonna push those rafters together across that ridge board. And, and that's why that ridge board doesn't really do anything on a non-structural ridge. It, it's just kind of sandwiched in there and getting pressed on. Uh, but the gravity, if allowed to, it would press down on the rafters and try and spread them apart. Uh, and so that's why that cross tie is, is so important. So that's about it for today for the details. Uh, stick around and I'll have some video of me uh, putting up some of these rafters. Thanks for watching.